welcome to Essential Ingredients, powered by Next Gen Purpose. EI serves up thoughtful conversations with industry leaders and pioneers who support a regenerative future for our food system. The stories shared by our guests are meant to spark curiosity and inspire informed global change. Welcome to Essential Ingredients. I'm your host, Justine Reichman. Today with me is Francis Cole Jones. Welcome, Francis. Thank you. So great to see you here today, Francis. It's fun to be here. It's it's great. It's been so long since I've seen you. And uh, not only are you a guest, you're a friend. And it's fun to have friends on the show. I don't get to do that often enough. Um, and I'm so honored to have a friend that is a great resource for my community. So thanks for joining. So for those that don't know you, Francis, would you share with them a little bit about who you are and what you do and what Francis Cole Jones Inc. is? It is, as you said, a resource. Um, for example, if you need media training, so you have a podcast as Justine does, or you um, are going on the local radio show to talk about your product or your service, or you're standing up in full, front of a room full of investors and you're trying to raise money, this is what I do. I help people present themselves and their product or their service in the most compelling way possible. And that is so important, especially for our founders and people that are innovating and coming up with new products. Because you can have a great product, but if you can't present it and show it in the right light, you're gonna lose them right at the go. Right. You can have a great idea and if you can't get people to understand why it's a great idea. They're not going to give you money. So really, it starts, you know, from the from the very seed, the germination of the project all the way through to taking it out onto the market. How did you get started with Francis Cole Jones, Inc.? I used to work in media training, I mean, in publishing uh, with authors and we would hire media trainers to work with my authors and I watched how they did that. And I thought, okay, there's, I think I can do it. Maybe I can do it better. So I quit my job and I got myself trained and I went into business for myself in 1997. Wow. Okay. And so you've been doing this ever since. Yeah. Wow. And so your business has also expanded. It's not just media training anymore. Can you talk to me a little bit about that and what other resources you're offering your clients now? So in addition to the television interviews, the print interviews, the radio interviews, the investment, you know, meetings that you might have, I'm also working uh, as a yoga therapist. So what that does is it gives me tools to help clients with who might be frightened about speaking in public um, for whatever reason or who just find themselves a little short of breath when they have to do that. The other thing that it does, and again, it depends on your industry, is it for clients who have terrible back pain from sitting at a desk all day, or if you have you know, chefs among your cohort who have repetitive stress injuries from doing the same thing all day, then it gives me a way to work with them because it's impossible to present your best self if you're in pain. Yeah, I so, know. Yeah, that's an additional set of tools that I bring to this. So the management of anxiety and then literally the management of the physical pain as well. Yeah, well, I imagine if we just go back to even pre presenting, when people are presenting their business, raising money, it creates anxiety for many people. And also not knowing how to do it properly, um, you have a lot, you have a lot to lose there and you've got to a lot to gain. So what are some of the things that you see people doing wrong? And what are some of the things that you recommend for some of those founders that are going out for the first time? Many people make the mistake of telling their story in those situations. Let me tell you about myself and my story. People don't care about your story. They care about how you're going to make their life better. All right. So if your story does not demonstrate how you're going to make your listeners life better, then they're going to stop listening because nobody cares. They simply don't. So that's one big thing is actually framing your story in such a way that it not only includes, but it is in service to the people that you're speaking to. 
The other thing that happens quite a bit is people fall back on what's known in my business as the useless modifier. Oh, it's great. It's amazing. It's incredible. It's awesome. It's so cool. And I don't know what you're talking about. You could be talking about your sweater. You could be talking about your sandwich. Nothing happens in my brain when you say that. So you have to have very short, very short stories about every product and service that you're offering. And ideally, those stories demonstrate how you're going to make the person's life better. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. So if I'm talking about a consumer product good that um, I've just created, it's innovative, it's new, people haven't seen or heard of it before, and I can't bring it to them because you're doing it over Zoom, what's the best way to communicate the taste, um, how, to how, to, how for them to imagine it? So give me, just give me just a super broad example of what that might be. Are we, are we talking a hot sauce? Are we talking- Hot sauce, let's use hot condiment. sauce. That was a, let's, it could be, let's use a hot sauce, condiment. Okay. So first thing you want to do in that situation, I would do, is you want to forestall their inevitable feeling, which is like, there are a million hot sauces out there. So why is yours different? So I would build that in as I begin talking to people and say, you know, and I'm sure the first thing you're sitting as you sit, you're thinking as you sit there is like, what's so great about this girl's hot sauce? Let me tell you. All right. So imagine, imagine their objection. See if you can forestall it, but do it in a humorous way. You don't want to put people on the spot. And then say, ideally, you will have done a little research. So Justine, I know one of the things you love most in the world, we're making this up now, is eggs in the morning, right? And now you want your eggs to be a little bit zippy in the morning because you love them and you want to get your day started, but you don't want them to be so zippy that if you're drinking coffee too, you end up feeling wretched within the hour, right? So what I've done is I've created a hot sauce that not that get, like sparkles on your palate, but it doesn't burn in your stomach. Okay, so now, okay, do you see what I'm doing? I'm this in. all about you, right? <laughs> right all about I've, me, which I like. I've, right, I've offset your concerns about too many hot sauces. I've explained why mine's a little bit different. Um, it's got zing, but it doesn't like destroy you. And I've demonstrated that I've done some research into you and your background. So again, those are the kinds of ways you want to start to build the stories for people. I like that. I mean, I think it's personal. And it talks about the hot sauce and it, and I can relate to it and I can envision it and I want to try it. I hope so. That's a win. <laughs> my myth, my mythical hot sauce is now a win. <laughs> it's a win. It's a win. Um, I think that's, that's a great tool for people to be able to take away from this. Uh, and I know that we work with a lot of uh, people in this day and age that are now doing things on Zoom and it's become a challenge when you can't taste or send things ahead of time or things break or this and that. I don't know what you've been seeing, um, but it's been a challenge. Yeah, I mean, the other thing you need to do with Zoom is if people can, if you have a product that requires feeling, right? Uh, you don't want to say like, wow, you know, Justine, if you, if you were selling me your sweater, you could say like, oh, my sweater is so soft. It's the softest sweater I've ever worn. Nah, nothing's happening in my brain. This sweater is as soft as a thousand baby kittens. Okay, that's interesting. All right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if you're selling eyeglasses on Zoom um, and you want to say, you know what? These eyeglasses are lighter than probably most of the blue light glasses that people are wearing. And let me give you an example. Do you have paper clips in your office? This pair of eyeglass frames only weighs as much as 20 paper clips. Okay, now that's interesting. Now I know. So it's giving people a frame of reference that is either like unusual enough that it makes them laugh and they remember it like a thousand baby kittens or like literally pick up something in your office and that's how much it weighs. So you want to begin to think through all of those things. Well, the common thread that I enjoy throughout all this is a sense of humor. Yes. I appreciate people remember it. longer and they take in more and they're so much more relaxed if you can make them laugh a little bit. So, and it just makes it seem less like work. So 
I agree. So the other thing I just, I wanted to bring up, because I know it's relevant for me, and I know it's relevant for a lot of people, is anxiety. And when you're pitching and when, you, when you're talking to people, it can be very anxiety writing and debilitating. And, and I know you talked that you had a lot of tools, whether it was the yoga and the breathing or all sorts of things. I'd love for you to just share a couple tips that you might have for our listeners and viewers. One of the first things to think about is that you want to close your mouth and breathe through your nose. All right, breathing through your mouth tells your body you're in distress. So right now, that's going to calm everything down, slow everything down. Then really, it's honestly, it's about taking a big inhale and allowing your stomach to expand. Because people like do these big inhales and their chests expand, but it's when your abdomen expands that you really, the whole rib cage has the opportunity to get involved. So, you know, you're getting a little bit more air. So I would imagine that that's always a good thing. And then I think that it's important and it sounds so irritating to practice out loud because you can think that you know how you're going to answer a question or start your presentation, but it's only when it's coming out of your mouth that you might notice that you have a huge plot hole. All right. So, so you, I want you to practice out loud, but what I don't want you to do, because one of the things that makes me really sad is when people say like, stand in front of your bathroom mirror and practice. Nobody wants to do that. That's horrible. Right. So what I want you to do is go for a walk and practice out loud or go for a run. If you like running, I don't care. Doesn't interest me at all. What exercise you do while you do this, but do it out loud while your body is in motion. It makes it less, you know, anxiety provoking for you. But the other thing that it does is it embeds the information in your body completely differently. Um, and that means, which helps you to pull it up later when you are stressed. So just doing that practice out loud, noticing where you get stuck. The other thing I want people to do before any kind of a big meeting or presentation is think of the worst three questions that you're going to get asked right? And come up with those answers. Mm. All right. So what you don't want to do is say, uh, oh, these are the worst. What are the worst three questions? Well, let's hope that one doesn't come up. <laughs> hope, hope is not a strategy. strategy. Okay. I remember that <laughs> forever. I use that for everyone, Francis, by the way. So you really do. Like you have to come up with the worst, worst three questions you're going to get. And you want to have the answers to those. All right. I think that's and then just as your fail-safe answer, so say somebody, somebody asks you something and your mind goes completely blank. Nothing is happening. The way you want to respond is, I'd like to think about that for a moment because I want to be sure to give you the best answer possible. All right? Nobody is like, ugh, what's up with that Justine who wanted to give me the best answer possible? What was her like? What was her problem? All right. So you, you want to you want to just just ask for the time that you need in that moment, but be sure to tell them why you need the time because I want to give you the best answer possible. Because I've never found anybody who's mad about that. No, it sounds thoughtful. It sounds sincere. You can't argue with that. Right. And if you don't have the answer, just say you know what because I do want to give you the best answer. I don't want to like, you know, just spitball this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get back to you within X amount of time. Always give them the by when you will get back to them. And then do get back to them. All right. <laughs> Please. Please. I mean, a lot of times people say, oh, I'm going to be getting back to you, but they don't tell me when, and then they don't do it. And now trust has been broken and I'm never working with you again. So, yes. I like those tools. Thank you. Those are great. So um, I know that you also have a lot of resources on your website I that do. you've been putting together for the last, I don't know, 15, 17 years. How, how many years? 17 years? Been writing every week for something like 17 years. Um, the My first book was called How to Wow. And you can purchase that if you wish to. But what I also do is I write the wow of the week and it comes out every week or now these days, every other week, because I am back in school full time. And 
what you can do is if you have a question about anxiety management or presenting your best self or storytelling or customer service or dealing with a hideous boss or dealing with a hideous employee, I don't care. Um, you can go on the website, which is francescolejones.com and type in your keyword. And it will offer you many, many articles that are only about one page long because I don't have a lot of time. You don't have a lot of time. All right. We're not, I'm not writing away for pages and pages. Let's get in, get out. You need your answer. You want to move on with your day. Okay. So type it in, you get your answer, move on with your day. If you want to sign up, the wow of the week comes out every other week and you can sign up there. And I also, just for fun, I started recently something called, wow, that's a thought. And you can sign up to just get the daily quote in your inbox, just for whatever reason, something that I ran across that I thought was really thought provoking. It's usually about two sentences, um, just to give you a springboard or an inspiration for your next great thought. Is that on your Instagram or on your social anywhere too that I've seen? I put, I put my thoughts up on Instagram. Okay. I and thought on, I saw that somewhere. And also on Facebook, they're up there too as well. But you can sign up and get them right in your inbox. Um, however, you most like to get your information. So I wanted to circle back as you were going through the all the different wow things that you had. Yes. You mentioned customer service. Yes. So, so for entrepreneurs, customer services, and for startups and small businesses in particular, customer service is really important um, because when... I see these Yelp reviews and somebody was having a bad day or you get one bad review and you read those, people take them to heart. Um, and I think it's a really important topic to cover. So I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. The hardest thing when someone is shrieking at you is not to become defensive. At least that's been my experience, <laughs> right? Yes. Um, so, so for example, just complain to me about something that, or say something that, for some reason why you don't think that my product or service is right for you. Uh, why your product is not right. Okay. I think your product yeah. is not right for me because you do not call back. I, so, I, I can't trust you. You never return my calls. Okay, so in, in that moment, it's very, it's very, very compelling to say, well, I mean, I returned your call yesterday. Okay. <laughs> Not make the person that you're talking to feel like you've heard them. Right. And if it's a trust conversation, it's about feeling heard. So in that moment, to be able to say to somebody, I want to be sure that I understand why you're upset. What, you, what I hear you saying is that when you call me, I don't get back to you as quickly or... Um, by when I said that I would. Is that correct? I like that. Yes, that is okay. correct. Okay, so what works about that response is, there's a, there's a lot that just went into that. One is you, you reframe what they've said, but what you want to do is you want at the end to say, is that right? Right. What that does is it loops the other person back in. And then they say, yes, that's exactly right. Or no, I'm also bad about this. Okay. All right. So it's it's reframing what they've said. You know, a lot of people know about active listening, blah, blah, blah. This is one step beyond. It's listening, making sure that you reflective listening, you've heard what they said, and then saying, is that right? All right. So I, it's a technique called looping. They actually teach it in divorce mediation. Um, I've, never, divorce mediation too. I've, I've never been through being divorced, um, but I have no, a friend. I said you go to school for divorce mediation. I did. Oh, I okay. Divorce, no, I did. I went to school because I have a friend who's a divorce mediator. Whenever I talked to her, I could hear that she was doing something, but I couldn't, I knew that something was going on, but I couldn't put my finger on what it was. And she said to me, she's like, oh, that's looping. They teach it in divorce mediation. And I was like, I am signing up to become a divorce mediator, which I did. Um, people might've figured out by now, I really like going to school. All right, school, <laughs> ma school, school makes me happy, right? I love school. So <laughs> I went to school and I learned how to become a divorce mediator because this is the kind of thing that's useful. But the biggest takeaway truly for customer service is when someone's upset, you don't necessarily wanna go straight to fixing the problem. 
you need to wallow with them. You need to be like, I told, I, I'm absolutely hearing how upset you are. And I really want to make sure I understand all the details of why you are so upset. And then make sure that I, I'm correct in my understanding. And then you can get to problem solving. Okay. And then the thing is, when you get to problem solving, my other recommendation would be always give people two options. All right. I don't know if any of you, anyone listening has kids, but you know, with children, you do not give them the, you don't give them a yes or no question. Right. You don't say, do you want apple juice? No. <laughs> you say, do you want apple juice or water? Right. Right. You want to sit in this chair? Do you want to sit in that chair? Same thing with irate customers. Give them two choices. Do you want this one or this one? Well, I don't want this one. Sounds like you want this one. Let's move you right over here to option B. Okay? <laughs> they want to say no to you about something. They want to be mad. So just, yay, give them a chance to say no to you. All right. So we wallow, we loop, and then we give two choices. Hey, there's a little mini course in customer service. <laughs> Oh my God, I love this. This is brilliant. Thank you. I have a good time. I'm having fun. I hope everyone else watching and listening is having fun. Francis, this has been so great. You've given so many tools, so many resources, Thank and you. it's just been great. So if anybody wanted to learn more about how to wow, the wow factor, the, the wow of the day, the I'm sorry, I've lost track. All wow, it's all wow all the time. All um, wow all the time. What's the website to go to? It is my name, which is francescolejones.com. And if you just have a question, um, I have a ask a question section on the website. And if you don't have that on your website, I highly recommend it. It's a great, great way to build trust with people. I mean, you have to answer the questions, okay? So don't build it and don't <laughs> answer the questions. Because again, trust broken. but Every question that I'm asked rolls directly to my phone. If people write and ask me questions, I will write you back. So if anything's come up for anybody today, they have more questions about, then just send me a note and I'll write you back. Awesome. We'll make sure to include your uh, email, your website in the show notes as well. Excellent. Thank you so much for joining us today. I really appreciate it. And I'll see you guys all next week on Essential Ingredients. To learn more about these episodes and access show notes, go to nextgenpurpose.com and choose podcast. If you like this episode, head to Apple Podcasts or your favorite platform to subscribe and leave us a review. Visit the Next Gen Purpose YouTube channel to subscribe to our EI videocast and give this episode a like while you're there. Follow us on Instagram and LinkedIn at Next Gen Purpose and connect with me on LinkedIn or Instagram at Justine underscore Reichman. Thanks for joining us.